Hey guys, I'm doing a little video on a rock that I got from Audubon, Pennsylvania. Um, Audubon was named after John James Audubon, who was an ornithologist and painter back in the 19th century. And uh, actually, he was born in Haiti and spoke French, and he um, went to France, learned to paint. But like many people in his time, um, well, not many people, but like a, a number of people, he became like an explorer. Um, so he was, he was, he died in 1851. So it was the time of exploring the new continent. It was, there was a lot of excitement. Uh, there was Alexander von Humboldt in Germany. There was, um, uh, what was his name? I think William Barclay was, was somebody much, a little earlier, who was Phil in Philadelphia. Um, of course, there was the Lewis and Clark expedition, so forth and so on. So Audubon also did exploring, but he had learned to paint in France. So he is well known for painting all the beautiful paintings of birds. He was really an ornithologist also, so, and those paintings are classic, even though now people can just go out and take photographs or something, but he would, he, 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 he painted, painstakingly painted these unknown, then unknown birds, and uh, so advanced science that way, and his he always had financial, you know, almost, all, almost always had financial issues. And at one point, he owned this mine and this property that had a mine on it. And the problem um, with the mine was that it has different ores all mixed together in it. So it wasn't a super, um, and I'll, as I'll show you on this, on this rock, um, the problem is, yeah, so it wasn't pure thing, like, pure copper, pure iron, pure lead or something, but it has a mixture and so it was hard to extract the metal out of it. And um, so that was just one of his many financial issues. Like the, he, uh, he, when he would travel, <clears throat> he would, you know, he would just like, sometimes he was just penniless. And fortunately his wife had a lot more, you know, practical sense and, and she was very understanding as far as I recall reading his story. Um, and she would help him out, and and he would be gone for long times. And but anyway, so that was odd. That's why it's called Audubon. It's it's near King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. It's in the southeast there, and it's and uh, okay. So um, so I, you'll see in this rock. Then I was able to get it. Of course, it's a park, so you can't collect rocks on the park property. That's where the mine is. Um, but I was able to find um, a sample from what would have been from the mine of the ore um, off the property. So um, basically, so what you end up with here is, okay, the first mineral, it's almost like a little planet or it's like its own little rock collection. So you can see the gold colored material here. That's calcopyrite. Okay. I'll just kind of I guess point at it there. That's the calcopyrite. There's a little galena, a little lead in it, but it's basically calcopyrite. Okay, and then uh, there's also more over here, and and some of it could be pyrite too, and some of it's bornite. Uh, you can't see it here well, but there's the it's it's basically copper and possibly iron in here. You can see there's r brown in there. Maybe that's some of that. That's rusted out metal. Um, so that's the copper aspect, possibly iron aspect. Then you have your your um, lead ore. This is called galena. And let's see, get a piece over here. For example, galena comes in little rectangles. Um, so you can see the little rectangle formations here in the galena. You can't see how sparkly it is. Um, see somewhat maybe the camera can capture some of it it's silvery bright silvery shiny silvery yeah i love galena even though it's it's poisonous for us so that's lead 
So you had copper, maybe iron, maybe lead. And wherever you have galena, you, have, you can have silver. But I haven't actually found any silver on this piece so far. I don't really know how to recognize silver. I think usually it's kind of tarnished. And it could be here, but I just don't know what I'm looking at in that sense. I don't know how to identify silver. But, um, and the two other minerals that we have on this one are barite. Um, that's these little, these little, I don't know if you can see, there's these little, um, platelets or whatever you want to call them. That's like the same thing as the, the desert roses are made of. I'm, I'm like about 70% sure that that's barite. I'm not sure. It could be something else, but that's what I think that is. And, uh, you know, if there's something else, feel free to post it and we can, yeah, maybe we can nail it more. And then, of course, then there's just regular old uh, quartz crystal. Uh, obviously, the rock came under pressure and heat. And so the quartz, which is a lot of the, a lot of this rock is quartz, so the matrix, what, what's called the matrix. So heat and pressure, and then there was uh, open spaces, so you ended up with this various quartz crystals in it. So you can see, like, poor old Audubon had this, it's a cool place for, and there's lots of metal and everything, but it's really hard that you what you would have had to do to this quartz to get that metal out of there. I guess they would have probably had to crush it and then uh, uh, try to melt it down and then try to separate the different metals and different processes that way. So anyway, that was fun. It's it's historic and also geologic. So what more can you ask for? Okay, that's that one. Until next time.